Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about welding defects. It's one of the most frustrating things when you're welding is to uh, run a bead and look down at it and see uh, some defects in it. So we'll talk about some of the different defects you'll see while you're welding, as well as uh, how to take care of them. Okay. The uh, defects we'll talk about today are correcting speed, under and overfill, spatter, um, undercut, slag inclusion, porosity, cracks, and metal warpage. Um, these all can be pretty frustrating, um, and we'll uh, see if we can't get, get you guys to get these taken care of. All right, first thing we'll talk about, correct weld speed. If you weld too fast, you're going to get a long, stringy bead. It's not going to be consistent. It's not going to have any strength. You're going to have to slow your bead down, have a nice, consistent speed. Um, if you go too slow, your weld will be really fat, and it'll stick up. It'll bulge off the surface of the weld. Um, I'll give you some examples here. You can see here, this is an okay weld. You can see it's a little bit fatter over here where they started. As they get down over here to the left, kind of evens out. It's the same distance across. That's about the right width. Still not a great weld, not a great example, um, but it gives you some idea. What I really wanted to show you with this image is down here. You can see the fast weld. It's got uh, that long stringy appearance. It's uneven and zigzaggy. And the slow weld, it's fat, it's wide, it's got a nice even contour. But it's just too large for what they're doing. It puts too much heat in the metal. You can see the um, discoloration around the weld. But if you look over here, when you hit uh, the perfect speed on a weld, a lot of times what you get what's called slag peel, where that protective covering will actually just peel right off. And you can see that happening here down this lower picture. And you can see how beautiful that weld is underneath there. So weld speed is just something you have to play with, get used to the heat you're running, what kind of rod you're running, and... Uh, See what gives you a good weld. Okay, overfill and underfill. This has also a lot to do with weld speed. If you got uh, underfill, you're probably running too fast and not allowing enough filler metal to deposit in your weld. Overfill, you're probably running too slow and letting too much filler metal deposit in your weld. What those look like here, you can see up here at the top, you got an example of a V-groove weld with an open root, and that weld is bulging off. It's actually drooping off to one side. Um, that's a good example of overfill. You just have too much filling metal that's running right out of the weld. Um, it's just extra. It's not going to compromise your weld. It may add some extra heat because you put that much extra time in, um, but it won't be too big a deal. Down below, we can see underfill. Um, the x-ray on the left has some porosity in it. You can see little black spots. Um, the picture on the right, you can see this concave effect on both of them. That's underfill. You really want your weld to be about it. 16th to an eighth above the surface of the weld. That way you can grind it back out and have a nice flat surface to work with. So correcting weld fill, again, it's just going to be your speed. Um, if you got too much fill, go a little bit faster. And if you got not enough fill, go a little bit slower. Um, just going to take some time to play with that. Oh, there we go, spatter. Spatter is the deposits of little beads all around your weld. This happens when you're too far away from your weld and your rod's just splattering. The arc's pulling your metal and throwing it around the weld. You can see some pictures over here. It's a really easy fix. Just get closer to your metal. Get your rod down in that weld puddle. Um, don't let it float around in the air so much. Spatter is considered a weld defect. It's a pain in the butt to clean up and it can contaminate your metal surface around your weld. So try to avoid it. Get your electrode down in the weld puddle. Undercut. This is one of the most common and also one of the most serious weld defects out there. This is when the heat from your weld cuts into the metal at the toes of the weld, the edges of the weld. Um, it causes, it compromises the structural integrity of your weld, of the metal. Um, and if you have it in a weld test, you will not pass. Um, you can see here in this image off to the right, um, it's laid, it'll show the, the little little groove just at the toe of the weld there that says undercut. Um, that's all it is, is that cut into the filler metal. It doesn't have to be much. Matter of fact, this little weld over here to the left has undercut. It's really hard to see, but if you can see right where my arrow's at there, at the bottom, that's undercut, that's undercut. And up here at the top, there's some undercut going too. It can be very hard to spot, hard to deal with. The um, simple fix is to... Just let your weld run a little bit longer. They let the filler metal fill in that undercut at the toes. Um, 
your arc is going to gouge out the toes. That's what it does. It it melts away that metal so your weld can fuse to it. You just got to go a little bit slower or run your weld bead a little bit wider and allow that filler metal to fill in that undercut. All right, slag inclusion. This is when the coating from your rod or from your wire gets caught in your weld. It uh, causes weak spots and a non-consistent weld. You can see pictures down below, you've got all these holes through your welds. That's all that slag has been stuck in there. And up above, this is actually a bend test. The weld would look good from the surface, but when they bent it, you can see it pulled a crack here in the middle. Um, that's that slag coming out. The way you can fix slag inclusion is uh, to adjust your angle, speed, or the electro manipulation. Sometimes people will move the rod around too much, and the rod will ride back over the weld puddle, and it'll put it'll deposit filler metal over top of their uh, slag barrier. This will cause slag inclusion. Um, improper angle. Sometimes you have the wrong angle. Slag will fall in your weld puddle and get uh, infused in the weld, or even your speed sometimes. Again, this just can take some playing to get rid of it. It can be a very frustrating week, frustrating weld defect, and sometimes one you don't know you have um, until you bend it or grind it. So you're going to have to check your welds, do a weld test, bend them, see what you got going. Porosity, very similar to uh, slag inclusion. This is when gas pockets get stuck in your filler metal while it's still in the molten form and cause air bubbles, weakening your weld, compromising its integrity. Um, this is caused usually by impurities on your weld surface. This is either going to be rust, oil, paint, anything like that is going to evaporate from the heat of your weld, create a gas, and it's going to get stuck in your gas bubbles. Now you can see up here at the top of the right side, there's a nice weld bead running, and below is a weld that is just tore up. It's full of porosity. Um, looks like they ran it without any gas coverage. That's about the only way you can get a weld that bad. Down below, though, you can actually see a weld that looked pretty good from the surface. You can see it all the way to the far left of the weld here. It looks pretty good. But over here to the right side, they actually ground into that weld, and you can see all the bubbles in there. There's I mean, no strength to that weld, no consistency. Um, that's why you need to be checking your welds. That's why we use ultrasound to check them inside without grinding them. Um, if you're just practicing, though, grind out your welds, see how you're doing, see if there's any porosity in there. A bend test will also show it. Um, correcting porosity, this is typical in MIG. Um, you're not going to get it much in stick. It can happen if you have enough contaminants on your metal, but unlikely. Uh, most of the time with gas, with uh, MIG, it's, you're getting poor gas coverage. So you're going to need to adjust your angle or your speed, or even the pressure of your gas. Could be a lot of variables, um, but usually it comes down to your gas coverage with the MIG process. Weld cracks. Um, these aren't as common. Not many people see them. This is going to happen when you either run a weld too hot or too cold. There's a ton of variables that go into it. Sometimes you don't know why the heck your weld cracked. It just happened. Um, you're just going to have to play with it and see uh, what's causing the cracks. Usually they're longitudinal, so you can see down below the cracks running the length of the weld. This happens when the weld shrinks as it cools and the metal just can't hold and the structure breaks apart. Um, again, it's longitudinal over here to the lower right. And... Uh, up here at the top, you can see this. It looks almost like someone reefed on that pipe, but I think the uh, what really happened is they put too much heat on the far side of that pipe, and it pulled the weld and uh, broke this one on the far side. So, again, it's a heat issue. You're going to have to adjust your amps to uh, try and fix that. And this brings us to warpage. Um, warpage, again, it's a heat issue. Adjusting your amps up or down. Um, I don't have any pictures of warpage. You're going to know it when you see it. Your weld plate will be concave or convex, usually uh, concave towards the direction of heat. Um, it'll, if you are welding up new plates, the pull, you'll have a narrow toe on one side and a wide toe on the other. Um, you'll you'll re recognize warpage. Again, this is a heat issue, or you're not tacking your welds up properly um, and keeping your metal from moving around. So make sure you tack everything up properly. and run some good beads, keep good consistent speed, and don't overheat your metal. If you're having some crazy warpage on a uh, testing plate, give it some more time in between your weldments. Let the metal cool down. You put too much heat in, it's going to warp regardless. And the last thing we have here, if you really want to go through and look them up, I have all the sources for my photos. Unfortunately, I was unable to 
get take all the pictures myself and head look them up online. Um, so yeah, guys, get out there, do some welding, see what you can do. Um, if you have some weld defects, hopefully this presentation helped.